From the third bone in your neck all the way down to the last vertebrae in your spine, the joints of the spine are pretty similar. The joint surfaces are very vertical, and what that does is it forms a locking mechanism so that the vertebrae can't move too far forward. It's protecting the spinal cord from pressure and injury. In addition, each one of those vertebrae has a disc in between. The disc attaches the bone together, again forming uh, a locking mechanism so that the spinal cord doesn't have pressure. When we get to the top of the spine, things are different. Here's the skull. This is the top bone in the neck. We call that the atlas. And the bone underneath that is the axis. These joints are much, much flatter. And what that does, it provides a tremendous amount of movement in the upper neck. Now, there are no discs between the skull and the atlas or the atlas and the axis. There is some cartilage there, but it doesn't form the same attachment. That what we gain in movement, unfortunately, leaves us prone to misaligning. If we have any type of trauma in the upper neck, it'll move the vertebrae out of its normal alignment. If that upper neck is out of alignment, the space for the brainstem becomes smaller and pressure is exerted on the cord. That does not allow the brain and the body to communicate properly.